In Escape from Tarkov, your main character is classified as a PMC, belonging to either the Bear or USEC organization. But oftentimes I've heard players ask, what's a PMC? Or I've seen confusion as to whether USEC are United States soldiers, or that Bear are official Russian army soldiers. To help clear the air on this issue, let me explain exactly what a PMC is and what it isn't. PMC is short for Private Military Contractor, or basically a person who performs soldier duties for a private company or organization that is typically for profit. This differs from traditional military service, where soldiers either elect to join the military out of their own free will, or are conscripted through a compulsive service depending on the laws and regulations of their country. Traditional soldiers are often paid a very modest salary and benefits, while offsetting their cost of living and providing things like food and housing during their service, and sometimes promising additional benefits after their service ends, such as the GI Bill in the United States. But PMCs act more like employees of a for-profit company and trade their time and skill in exchange for an hourly or yearly salary, which is often significantly higher than that of a professional soldier in a traditional military with similar skills. The history of PMC organizations can actually trace its roots all the way back to the times of antiquity in the form of mercenaries. Throughout history, mercenaries have been present in conflicts going as far back as the 13th century BC where mercenaries were employed by Pharaoh Ramses II, and mercenaries have been involved in countless wars and battles since, ranging from small brushfire skirmishes and civil wars to large-scale global conflicts. And although the term mercenary is often associated with soldiers of fortune, or those looking to seek wealth from combat, it has been documented numerous times that occasionally mercenaries offer their services for causes they strongly believe in, or even to make a name for themselves to seek glory on the battlefield. In the late 20th and early 21st century, the reputation of mercenaries had become tarnished after numerous scandals revolving around mid-20th century conflicts, particularly those in Africa and South America. Mercenaries were no longer regarded as for-profit supplemental soldiers used to bolster an inexperienced or small fighting force, but rather as war tourists and thrill-seekers that possessed an unquenchable bloodlust and affinity for bloody combat. This sentiment continued until the United Nations added an amendment to the Geneva Convention's protocol in 1977, specifically stating that mercenaries are to be treated as non-combatants, and thus are not subject to the same protections as average soldiers, meaning that they cannot be taken as prisoners of war, and be returned to their home country after war's end, and are rather treated as criminals and subject to imprisonment or even execution. As more and more countries adopted anti-mercenary laws in the 1970s and 80s, the world saw the rise of the private military company. Although private military companies function very similar to mercenaries, they are, at least legally, viewed very differently. A PMC is still considered an unlawful combatant by the Geneva Convention, but the articles and amendments prohibiting their use were either not signed by the major players in world events, such as the United States, or are simply disregarded. These contractors have a wide range of duties, ranging from piloting, driving, and reconnaissance, to armed security and defense of VIPs, locations, or as escorts for logistical shipments. PMC groups operate on every continent on Earth, other than Antarctica, and it is an estimated $100 billion industry. PMCs can be found operating alongside a conventional army, such as in Iraq and Afghanistan in the early to mid-2000s as well as providing armed security for commercial vessels passing through notoriously dangerous areas, such as off the coast of Somalia. Essentially, in any case where large-scale armed protection is needed, or where assets require defense that is not deemed worth the allocated trained soldiers to defend, PMCs can be found. But these groups do not operate with immunity to scandal. In September 2005, Brigadier General Carl Horst, Deputy Commander of the 3rd Infantry Division charged with Baghdad security after the 2003 invasion said of DynCorp and other PMCs in Iraq. These guys run loose in this country and do stupid stuff. There's no authority over them, so you can't come down on them hard when they escalate force. They shoot people, and sometimes someone else has to deal with the aftermath. It happens all over the place. One of the most notorious PMC groups in Iraq in the early 2000s was Blackwater USA often viewed as the cream of the crop or the best of the best when it comes to PMC companies, 
Blackwater employees were often highly trained and almost always former professional soldiers. But due to a few high-profile incidents, the name became tarnished, as accusations of the killings of civilians and other high-profile crimes were widely reported on by global media. And suddenly, what was once a clandestine and highly secretive component of the American war machine, now the term military contractor has become a household name. Regardless of what one may or may not think about the usefulness or morality of employing PMC groups in modern combat, all indications are that PMC groups are here to stay. Studies conducted on casualty sensitivity, or basically how the general populace of a nation reacts to war casualties, are that of near indifference when it comes to the loss of PMC life. Or more accurately, that the public is often not even made aware of the fact that PMCs are dying in wars. In Iraq and Afghanistan, PMCs accounted for about 30% of all U.S. casualties, and in some years, PMC deaths outnumbered soldier deaths. Meanwhile, more and more U.S. diplomats choose PMC groups as their personal bodyguards, as well as more mundane tasks such as guard duties and convoy driving and protection is being handed off to private military firms. This lack of reporting and casualty record-keeping, along with the national deniability that comes with employing a PMC group, is exactly why they are the actors within Tarkov, and not US or NATO and Russian soldiers combating one another like in so many other video games. But rather than a government or army hiring USEC, the fictional transnational corporation Terra Group has created their own privatized army by utilizing USEC hired guns and the offsetting of national responsibility is exactly why their main adversary is Bear, and not the official Russian military, since the United Nations is involved in the Tarkov conflict. If Bear operatives were to intentionally or accidentally fire upon UN peacekeepers, it would look less like an act of aggression by Russia, and more of yet another blameless blunder made by a private army that would most likely only result in an acquittal of wrongdoing in some courtroom, in a trial that would take place a decade after the incident had occurred. With the use of private militaries growing, and now becoming commonplace in conflicts around the globe, it looks like their use as the main combatants within Tarkov was actually quite forward-thinking of BSG when they designed the Tarkov universe. In my years owning a gun shop, I got to know several high-risk civilian contractors in real life. At one point, I also owned an AK and an AR pattern rifle that was used by PMC groups in Iraq, which I purchased when their company was liquidating some old stock. One former PMC once described the private military industry as a rapidly changing one, and at one point, you could make quite a lot of money doing it. But since the winding down of the U.S. involvement in the Middle East, a massive influx of combat experienced veterans began to flood the PMC market, and jobs began to offer far less and employment requirements got more and more strict, with many companies requiring former military service or documented combat experience. In reality, the vast majority of PMCs today remark that the jobs they perform are admittedly quite boring. Oftentimes, they are guarding chow halls at well-defended fobs, driving trucks within green zones, or providing security at construction sites. But nevertheless, they are working within an active combat zone, and there is an inherent risk during their occupation. And there are more elite organizations that focus on VIP and asset protection that carries with it more risk than your average PMC group. But that's pretty much everything you need to know about what a private military company is. There really are no protagonists or good guys in Tarkov. All of our characters are employed by very shady companies or entities to perform military duties for profit and to avoid scandal and scrutiny at all costs. When Tarkov was sealed off, your character was simply abandoned, written off like a line item on a profit and loss sheet. Oh well, we'll just have to hire some replacements. No decorum or burial with honors if he dies and no negotiating for their safe return like a prisoner of war. But then again, I think your PMC knew the risk before going in. Or did he? Let me know in the comments below if you think that USEC and Bear PMCs really understood the gravity of the Tarkov situation. Did they know how numerous and well-equipped the scavs and crime bosses within Tarkov were? Did they know how many layers of deception there were involving all of the actors within Tarkov? And did they know that the region would have been sealed off, with them trapped inside? Discuss your ideas in the comments for now, and until next time, I'm Jeff with EUL Gaming, good luck out there.